Oh, sorry, you're decent. Is Rachel still asleep? No, I've got a rinse and a knickers in the sink. Oh. oh, what time is it? Oh, bloody hell. Well, you said you wanted an early call. Me and my big cub. So, uh, what are you going to do then? I'll have to switch B and B's, I suppose. Well, we're going to have to do more than that. How do you mean? Well, we've got to get out of Dublin as soon as possible. And go where? Well, we'll get lifted if we try and sneak back into England. Well, maybe we'd be better heading down the coast. Well, from town to town. Well, for a bit, yeah. How much money have we got left? Enough for a few more days. And then what? Well, we'll have to play it by ear and see if we can get work on the way. Well, won't the police be looking for us all over Ireland? Probably. So what's the point? The point is, if we keep moving, we've actually got a chance. To do what? To get ourselves out of this mess. How? I don't know. We'll have to get jobs in a bar or dishwashing. Earn enough money to go away abroad. Abroad? Yeah, we wouldn't need much cash. You can always pick up a couple of cheap flights. The main problem would be getting bent passports. What do you think this is? You, you're talking about a housewife, a window cleaner and a medical student, not Ronnie Biggs. Stealing cars. It's either that or Plan B. Well, what's Plan B? We give up and go to jail. And let Dad win. Well, I'm with Ronnie Biggs myself. Well, it's up to you. Well, you better get Rachel. Grab them bags, will you, love? Bloody hell, how many's coming to this do? I just want to make sure we've got enough grub. You could feed the flying squad over there for a week on this lot. Yeah, yeah. I wish they'd hurry up and find Mandy Jordash. Maybe that lot'll clear off then. I nearly ran over one of those flaming kids before. Anyway, forget about them and come and feast your eyes. What? Are you all finished? About time, too. Thank you very much, aren't you, Fussy? Sorry, yeah, it's nice. Don't know why I bothered. I'm sorry, love. I mean, I'd happily spent all day coping to your borders, but I've got this ruddy housewarmer to organise. Aye, oh, all right, fair news. Has Kia been behaving herself? Oh, after the fashion, yes. Why, what's up? Come on, girl. It's been doing its business all over the house. That's what's up. Where is she? It is in the oven, where it belongs. Oh! It's in that box. Oh, you! Come on, mate, you all right? I tell you, Beverly, I'm not having that thing crapping all over this place. Well, she hasn't been house-trained yet, has she? Yeah, and where's all these world-famous eggs we were supposed to get? Give her a chance. She's probably still just missing her mates. I keep telling you, there won't be any eggs because she is a cock. You don't know what you're talking about. Come on, Beverly. I'll get you a nice box of trill. Morning, love. Look, me and Rachel are going down for some breakfast. Do you want to come? Oh, no, thanks. Cup of tea will do me. What about you? Uh, I'm not bothered to... What, are you turning down a fry-up? Well, I'm going to try and lose a few pounds for part of the new image, you know. OK. Well, we'll see you down there. See ya. What do you think of beards? What? I've been trying to grow a beard, you know, now that I'm a master of disguise. Uh... Are you sure you want to go through with it? I'll grow a beard. Not safe on shaving for them. No, we're going on the run. I thought I already was. Do you realise what you're doing? You'll never be able to go back. You, you're giving your whole life up. <sighs> Man. Before you came along, I didn't have much of a life to give up. But... No buts. All I ever want is you. And if that means dying my hair or changing my name or having plastic surgery, even if it means running off and living in some caravan in Poland, then that's fine. It's my choice and I chose you. I love you. Bloody good job after all this palaver. One of the worst things about all of this is the thought of us being apart. Well, we won't be now. What if we get caught? I don't know. It's going to be weird pretending to be somebody else. It'll do you good. You can forget about Trevor and all that he put you through. 
on that Kenny Maguire business. It'll be just you, me and the girls. Yeah, but... If there is a chance of me spending the next 20 years in jail... Man... No, but if it does happen... What? I want some memories to take with me of us. We love each other, don't we? Yeah. But we've never made love. No. If time is running out on us, let's not waste it. Let's take what we can while we can. Some cock and bull rubbish about that flea-bitten mongrel of his digging up other possible human remains. I never heard about that. That's because it didn't. It unearthed an old lamb bone it had buried there the week before. And listen to this. Despite Cracker's obvious talents for detective work, local residents, led by Mr. David Bing Crosby, 83... Morning. Morning. Ah, perhaps you could solve the mystery. What's up, Maxie? Well... You weren't by any chance woken by a cock crane first thing this morning, were you? Uh, me? <laughs> no, why? No, I just wondered... <laughs> Who's your friend? Hey, Kia, come here. Don't go onto the street. You'll end up a chicken burger. Hiya. What's this? This is Kiev. I took your idea on pattern well. What with me eggs, me veg, or Josh is going to be the healthiest kid in Liverpool. Oh, well, I'm glad to hear that. So you still off the housewarming? Yes, I think so. Sound? Right, uh, better get back to me buffet. See ya. Something, you know, we've got a long day ahead of us. Where exactly are we going? I don't know. What if I don't want to come with you? Well, I don't know that either. Because you can't drag me around like some sort of hostage, you know. So walk out then. Go on, go and give yourself up and watch Mum go straight to jail. Do not pass go. Do not collect the insurance money. What? Is that what you've done? Killed him for the insurance? No. Then why? I've already told you, Rachel. Why can't you try and believe us? How could you do that to our dad? You all set? Yeah, you ready? Yeah. All right, Dad. All right, son. Hey, don't you just love me, say? Uh, yes, yeah, suppose so. Just this, thanks. On me. Oh, very generous. Well, my profit margins are a bit healthier than normal, aren't they? Oh, eh? It's that lot round of jaw dashes. Me butties have been going down the storm. Oh, well, I'm glad to see someone's happy. Eh? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Must have come as a shock to find out that your mate's old fella's been propping up the patio, eh? Yeah, just a bit, yeah. You don't reckon she had anything to do with it, I do you? I changed the subject, eh? Yeah. Hey, listen, are you coming down to do tonight? Um, I'm not sure. Why have you got something on? Well, not exactly. You don't fancy it? Yeah, yeah, but you've invited the banksers, haven't you? Yeah, my thing is, I'm seeing Sarah, so... Of course, Carl. Yeah. yeah, he doesn't know yet. Isn't it time you broke the news? Yeah, but you don't want it going off in your housewarming, do you? No, flame it out. Anyway, listen, sod Carl Banks. Why don't you and Sarah pop round for an hour early on? Come on, and we'll sneak it out before the heavy mob arrives. Oh, I don't know, Dad. Oh, please. Look, I'll see what Sarah says, OK? Good luck. See you later. Ta-da. Where do you reckon? I don't know. Wicklow, 
Wexford. Well, anyway, with a W, let's just get going. All right, then Wexford. Simbad. Well, natural. I'll get the tickets. The sooner we get out of here, the better. So, what do you think of that lot over the road, then, eh? Mad, isn't it? Must be weird living next door to a murderer. I thought she was a mass murderer for a minute. What, when that dog took the bone up? Wonder where it is now. What, the dog? No, the bone. If you're hungry, have some of the buffet. Eh, uh, no, thank you, my love. It's not like you to turn down a plate of ribs, Dad. Ribs? What are they? Take no notice of him. He's got a cob on, cos I've done a vegetarian buffet. Oh, right. Are you peckish? Um, no, thanks, no. Um, we better make a move, eh? Oh, are you sure? We better had. Thanks for the bevy. Right. Thanks for coming. Bye. All right, yeah. ta-da now. Bye, love. Sarah? Hiya. What's... I'm sorry, mate. You're joking. Come on, we better get off. All right, we've only just arrived. You're right, we're going now. How long? What's happening? Oh. Two weeks. Suppose I'm the last to know. I only found out myself the other day. Come on, Mike. Don't do it on my accounts. We're all grown ups, aren't we? Can we get in? Kevin's freezing here. Hiya, Rose. This is my fella, Kevin. Oh, this is me. How'd you do? He stops shivering when he's got a drink inside him. Help yourself. I'm only joking, he's teetotal. Oh. Any spare here tonight, Mr. D? It's freezing, isn't it? Stop somewhere and have tea in a minute, eh? Yeah. I don't know, it feels safer here somehow, doesn't it? Hmm. They probably think we're still in Dublin. If we can stay in for a few more days, then the papers will forget about us and things will be easier. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, well, uh, if not, I've got another plan of action. I thought... I know what Beth said, but I've got a better idea. Why don't I say it was me? I mean, we were already on together. He caught us in the house, so I lost me drag and I stabbed him and I forced you no, to let me no, to bury him. No, no, he's going to confess it's me. Yeah, at I... least I'd have a chance in a courtroom. If you go in there and spin that yarn, you'll get life. So forget it. <sighs> Tea time, girls. <laughs> All right, Mick. Yeah. Come on, Bruce. <laughs> All right, Mick. All right, uh, look, uh, I'm sorry I'm late. Ah, oh, no sweat. Yeah, I've been cleaning the van out, you know, get it ready for the deliveries. It uh, stinks of manure, though, doesn't it? <laughs> Can I get you a drink, mate? Yeah, cheers, Bing. Hello. Just popping out the back. Check Kiev's OK. Lovely colour scheme. You don't have to stay long. Give it a chance. We've only just got here. It's not fair on your mum babysitting all night. <coughs> your concerns very touching. Yeah, well, I've got to get to bed early tonight. Why? Because that Kellogg's reject will be treating us to a dawn chorus in the morning, thanks to you. <laughs> Hey, Bing, you haven't met my fella yet. Hang on a minute. Bing, Kevin, Kevin, Bing. Oh, nice to meet you. And you? Oh, isn't he gorgeous? <laughs> Patricia? <laughs> Do you want to go a bit easier on that man, Brusco? Sorry, I'm just a bit nervous. <laughs> Where's the pork pies? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry I never got around to telling you myself. Doesn't matter. <laughs> We're friends together, aren't we? Mike still wants to be your mate, you know. Got a funny way of showing it. 
<laughs> Do you mind? You mean? No. A pity. <laughs> Cheese baby the tips, please. I thought you were on a diet. Nothing for me, thanks. You sure of? Yes. Can I just have the soup, please? Mind? What are you having? Um. Mom. Oh. Whatever. Um, just made that two soups then. Thanks. It's all right. There's nothing to worry about. Well, let's be honest. I mean, it's a classic, isn't it? Two right. Alky husband, battered wife. Then Simba comes along. Promises of the earth. But only if she can get rid of Trevor. Can you honestly imagine either of those two killing him? <laughs> well, I suppose everyone's got to kill him somewhere deep down. Thanks for that, Alex. Maybe he drove her to it. Oh, by all accounts, the man was a monster. Fair enough, but who's this body they took out of the cemetery? Shudder to think. <laughs> what the hell was that? Well, that fun, I think. All right, Buzz. Glad you could make it. All right, Ron. Always happy to keep a space of my diary for the neighbours, you know. Lager, do you? Yeah, cheers. <laughs> On your own? Yeah, why? Oh, where's Emma? How should I know? Oh dear, had a tip. What's that supposed to mean? Nothing, nothing. I just thought your girl Friday went everywhere with you these days. Yeah, well, you know what thought did. What do you think about Mandy and Simbad then, eh? Do you think they topped him or what? Simbad wouldn't know I'm a fan. Yeah, and I'm Julie Andrews. <laughs> Drinking for Britain tonight, aren't you? No. I've knew I had enough for one lifetime. What do you think it is, the Sally Army? Is that if you think it's good? Yeah, because her judge is going to be bad action. Room for a little one? Yeah. You having a nice time? Yeah. Thanks. Good. <laughs> Not soft, you know. You are. I've sussed what you're doing. Which is? You wouldn't have taken a blind bit of notice of that lad if he wasn't our girl's mate. All this is, it's a way of winding him up, watching him fall out with his friends into the bargain. No, it's not. You're just using, Mike. You're wrong. Anyway, he'll soon get bored. You know, a lad of that age, footloose, fancy free. He's not going to think much of life as a glorified babysitter, is he? Why don't you get it into your head? Me and Mike are happy. Now, you'd be far better off worrying about your own family and leaving us in peace. All right? <laughs> no, stop. Go open. Can't help it. Mom, for God's sake, the guy's only having a sandwich. He's been looking at that paper for ages. Well, he's probably picking winners. Oh, this is your chance, you know. To do what? Oh, to get it all over with. Give yourselves up. Oh, for crying out loud. Oh, to tell them what you've done. Rachel, nobody's telling anybody anything, OK? Gone now. Just finish your dinner. <laughs> Hiya. Yeah. <laughs> are we going to have a boogie after? Yeah, when you've had a bit of a lie down, eh? <laughs> Which room can I put her in? Take your pick. We've got three. I'll have the bridal sweet. <laughs> she always like this? I hope not. Well, Excuse me. Best of British. I'm sorry, Kev. I don't really think you're in the Sally Army. It's all right. You're not going to get frisky, are you? Just stand there a minute, eh? Take 
me, big boy. Right, thanks for coming to bed. See you soon. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank God that's over. Oh, comfort yourself with one thought. The next time they have a housewarming party, it will mean they've moved. <laughs> No, if Mandy did kill him, I don't think I could blame her. What? He must have been a vicious bastard. Well, that's hardly the point. Well, live by the sword. Oh, come on, let's go in. Right, let's get checked in somewhere then. Oh no. Oh, God, quick, let's get out the back. You're going nowhere. Rachel! You killed my dad, you stabbed him! Rachel, let her go! No, she's staying. Oh, she's right, I've got to. You go, look after yourselves. I mean, it was me who did it. Mand, after all this, no chance. Come on, Mum! This weekend, there's a special double omnibus at 5 past 5 tomorrow and on Sunday at 4.10. Morning, Mrs. Jordash. My name's Detective Inspector Chris Coburn. Where's Rachel? I'm sorry, but she's been interviewed at the moment. What can I see Beth or Sinbad? They're about to be questioned. I'm sorry, but there can't be any contact until my investigation's completed. Rachel's got nothing to do with all this. What's going to happen to her? Right. If we can get on. Earlier today, a spokesman for the police confirmed that the three people arrested were being questioned over the death of Mr. Trevor Jordan. Stand by. Ten seconds. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three. 
Police in Merseyside are questioning two women and a man in connection with the death of a man found buried in a suburban garden in Liverpool last week. The dramatic development occurred yesterday when Mrs Mandy Jordan... Mom, quick! Quick store on the telly! ...Thomas Sweeney were arrested by police in the Republic of Ireland. Arrested in Ireland? Shh. It's believed that Mrs. Jordash's other daughter, 15-year-old oh Rachel, was with her at the time of their arrest. The family and Mrs. Might Sweeney have known the crampets would have got in there somewhere. Shh. ...for more than a week. Last night, after being taken to police headquarters in Dublin, they travelled back from the Republic in the custody of Merseyside police officers. I don't Earlier believe today, it. A spokesman for Andy the Jordash and Simba. The if they went on the run in Ireland, there must be something in all this speculation. Mr. Mm. Trevor Jordash, a former building society manager. Mr. Jordash was released from prison early in 1993 after serving a two-year sentence for assault. Police throughout Britain have been searching for the trio, who are believed I to have left the even in on the house. Yeah. Max, we're trying to listen. Park, North Liverpool, shortly before workmen investigating an underground water leak excavated their this back is garden. The body Shh. wrapped in black. The body of your husband was found buried in the back garden. He had a fatal stab wound. Who killed him? I did. I did. On my own. Mum didn't know a thing till now. Just let the girls go. I did it. I killed them. Why don't you tell the police they'd had sex with your youngest daughter? Look, I can't go through all this until I know what's happening to Rachel. Rachel's still being interviewed. Yeah, but then what? We could probably get her into local authority care for tonight. She'll be looked after. In care? Well, it doesn't have to come to that. I mean, if you had somewhere, some friend or relative she could stay with. Uh, it's no one. Then I'm sorry. She'll have to go into care. Y you could ask next door my neighbours. Rachel knows them well. Mr and Mrs Banks? Ask them, please. WPC Moss is leaving the interview. So, why didn't you tell the police they'd had sex with your youngest daughter? Why leave it till now? I was frightened. He said if I told anyone, he'd kill me and the girls. He was very angry. Was he angry because you wrongly suspected him of having sexual relations with Rachel? I wasn't wrong. I know he did it. He got... He, he beat me up and then he got into bed with her. But how can you know what happened? It may have looked that way, but been totally innocent. I know what he did. He did the same thing to Beth years ago before he went to prison. That's why I went to the police that time, to stop him doing it again. But Trevor was sent to prison for causing you grievous bodily harm. Not for molesting his eldest daughter. Why didn't you report this allegation that he'd been with Beth to the police? To protect her from people knowing what her father had done to her. I just wanted him put away. That's why I reported him for beating me, to get rid of him, to get him out of the house. Then, when he came out of prison, he found us again. But that's when he got into bed with Rachel. I hoped he'd changed. I thought he could. This is the report on Rachel's interview. She claims her father never had any sexual relationship with her. She denies it all. He did, I know he did. That's why he threatened to kill us all. That's why I killed him. You alone, on your own? Yes. Do you reckon they'll bring them back to the house now they've caught them? Oh, I don't know, love. Such a shock. You know what's going to happen? I've heard he used to beat Mandy up. For her to kill him. Might not have been here. That Sinbad was always round there ever since we moved in. Might have been in that did him in. You know, he was after Beth's mum, like. Hey, it's all Ruben with stars. You never know. Anyway, haven't you got problems of your own to deal with? Like Madam up there and Mike Dixon. It's her life, Mum's got nothing to do with me, not now. Every time I walk in the room, it goes silent. How long is this going to go on with your mother? 
long as you're knocking about with Mike, I suppose. Can't blame her, really, can you? You could have picked someone who's not on our doorstep. Oh, for God's sake, Carl, she couldn't wait to see us split up. Why the big concern just because I've been out a few times with a fella? I'm meant to be going to the pictures with Mike tonight. Can you look after Becca? Mike, I myself. Excuse. Mum? Can you look after Becca tonight? Sarah and Mike are going to the pictures. Sorry, got a darts match. Oh well, looks like Mike will have to take the both of us out then. Come on, Beck. Why are you letting her do this to you, Carl? It's all just got nothing to do with me, not now. Maybe it isn't, but your daughter is. Do you want her off with someone else? Hello? Yeah, she's here. Just the police. Let's look at them bloody parasites. Let's just hope there's no more bodies found in there, eh? I'm surprised Corkills aren't hanging around. I'd like to know how much they paid him for that cock and bull story of his, making out he's some kind of local hero. Well, I suppose he's in a way, Dad. I mean, after all, his dog did his other buried bones, didn't he? I object to him making money out of that wretched creature. It's immoral. Hey, you had to want Mandy Jordash? Yeah. It's amazing, isn't it? I mean, you see these people every day, and then something like this happens. Bev, would you mind starting in the kitchen today? No. Um, Dave, you couldn't do us a favour, could you? And one of the farm, the savvy. Something wrong. He doesn't like the chicken. He said it's got to go back. Oh, it's got to go back, has it? Well, uh, well, I'm sure David will give you a lift. You don't mind, do you? Well, I... Breath of country, I would do you good, Dad. It'll only take us a sec. We can go now, if you like. All oh, right, I suppose. I'll go and grab Kiev. Yes. <laughs> uh, Pat, it is tomorrow you're enrolling your hours at nursery, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. I thought so. Only I've booked me and Josh there tomorrow as well, so we'll go together. Be handy, won't it? Do you ever get the feeling the neighbours are trying to invade our lives? I have all the cheek I told her about that nursery. <laughs> Let's talk about the day you stabbed your husband. What sort of mood was he in? Irritable and angry. He'd been hitting me all week. Did you ask him about being in Rachel's bed? Yes, I did. That made him angrier. He said he'd kill us all, me, Beth and Rachel, if I told anyone. That's when I knew I had to stop him. How did you stab him? He was boiling some milk at the stove. I waited until he had his back to me and then I just stabbed him as hard as I could. Where did you get the knife? Out of a drawer, a cutlery drawer. How did you stab him? In the back. Who else was there? No one. Well, where was everybody else? Well, Rachel was at school and Beth was at college. When did you bury him? That night after midnight. He was a big man, your husband. More than six foot. You're telling me you dragged him outside and buried him all on your own without any help? Yes. I don't believe you, Mandy. I think somebody helped you. I didn't. It was me. It was no one else. Interview suspended. 2.33 p.m. Rachel, what's going on? Rachel, tell us what's happening. Just answer a few questions. We need one of us. Rachel, what are we doing? How long did you know? Rachel, what's going on? 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 When your father had sexual relations with you, why didn't you report it to the police? I was 14. I just told my mum. So why didn't she report it? Because it was going to kill her. You don't know what it was like. He used to terrorise us. And that's why she told the police about the beatings, to get him in prison away from us. When he came out of prison and you'd moved to Brookside Close, did he attempt to interfere with you again? No. I kept well away from him. You see, I wasn't the little girl I was before he went to prison. I stood up to him this time. So why did you kill him? <sighs> to stop him doing to Rachel what he did to me. And to stop him from killing all of us. How did you kill him? I stabbed him. Where? In his chest? In the back. 
Who else was there? Nobody, just me. Who buried him? I did. On your own? Yeah. You dragged a full-grown man outside and buried him three feet deep, without anyone seeing and without anyone helping? Yes. If you don't mind me saying, I find that hard to believe. Well, that's what happened. Look, I admit it. I did it. I killed him. Now you can let Mum and Simba go. Hiya, love. What's for tea? I'm starving. Uh, salad, but we'll have to have it later. We've got a resident meeting at David Crosby's first. Oh, not flaming salad, Bev. I can't carry on like this. I don't like salads. I need proper food, meat. Ron, I don't want you to overreact or anything. Is but... that bloody cockerel still here? I thought I told you to take it back. I did. David Crosby ran me down there. So? Just promise me you'll stay calm. Bev, what's this all about? I just want some proper food. Ron, beat some of Kiev's mates. Well, I had to rescue them, Ron. I mean, there's only five of them. That's Kentucky, Nugget, Butty, Ham Pie and Fried Rice. I don't believe this. The proper chickens, and they lay us good, fresh, healthy eggs for our Josh. Out! 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 Chickens, come on, you! Out! Go! Out! I did try and take Kia back on us, but when I saw his mates... You stupid... What the hell have you got them for? Because otherwise they would have been killed, wouldn't they? Slaughtered and sent to supermarkets. I couldn't stand to see that happen, Ron. Look, you know how I feel. You know why we've gone vegetarian. If you could have just seen them there. Oh, that's for those poor pigs. You haven't got a pig at all. No. Oh, please let me keep them, Ron, please. All they need is some kind of run to live in and there'd be no trouble. And they were going cheap. I'm not even answering that one. You sure she's ready for nursery? Yeah, that'll do her good, mixing with other children. She needs that kind of interaction. I suppose she'll be interacting with young Josh. I can't see Ron Dixon paying fancy prices for a nursery place. Not when he's got Bev to look after that child. I mean, you know what he's like. <laughs> well, we can live in hope. Max, will you hurry up? We're running late for Dad's meeting. Oh, God, it happened. Patricia, look at this. <laughs> oh, my God. God. You know, he's doing this on purpose. Oh, don't be so silly. No, it's one thing after another. I mean, what is he trying to do? Open a zoo? Well, well, look who it is. Fancy coming for a pint? Uh, not just no way, mate. Oh, that's right. You've seen Sarah tonight, aren't you? Look, I'm sorry you had to find out like that. Why didn't you tell us, mate? What do you think he was going to do? Snot you on? Look, if you want to see Sarah, that's your business. I just thought you could have told me, that's all. You don't mind? I should do. We're mates, aren't we? I went out with your sister. You're going out with my wife. I'll be taking your mum out next. <laughs> Look, I just hope you know what you're getting yourself into, that's all. Back there they are now. She couldn't get a babysitter tonight. See you, Mike. Enjoy playing happy families. Rosie couldn't mind her tonight, so. Say hello to Mike, Becca. Yeah. Any chance of one of them now being on the uh, I miss me tea together here, you know? <laughs> yes, of course, help yourself. Oh, cheers, mate. What's on them ham? Yes. Aha! <sighs> uh -huh. Leave them alone. No meat. I've told Jean to save us some salad ones. We've gone vegetarian. What exactly is your relationship with Mandy Jordash? Friends. She means a lot to me. Were you having a relationship with her when Trevor Jordash was killed? Look, I didn't kill him because I wanted shut of him. It wasn't like that. And what was it like? I killed him because I knew one day he'd kill Mandy. Because I knew the kind of things he did to her. I knew what he did to the girls. Tell me about the day you killed him. What happened? Mandy told me earlier that day that he'd beaten her up again. So I went round and told him what I thought of him. And he got mad, really mad. 
He had a go at me and told me it was none of my business. Um, we started fighting. And he was getting the better of me, so I just picked up the knife and I stabbed him. I didn't mean to do it, it just happened. Okay. So you killed him. How did you do it exactly? I just... I just stabbed him in the chest. In the chest? Yeah. Where in the chest? Show me exactly. Well, what do you want me to do? Well... Pretend to stab me. And show me where you put the blade in. Go on, show me. It went in here? Yeah. Mr. Sweeney has indicated the left chest area below the shoulder blade. Who else was there? Nobody. No one at all? What about Manley and Beth? It had nothing to do with them. I killed them. Interview suspended. 6.18pm. I, I want to make a statement. Later, Mr. Sweeney. Well, can't you just let the girls go and do whatever you're going to do with me? Now, it seems to me that one of the biggest problems we have at the moment with the press is that young Rachel Jordish is now staying with the banks. Hey, Rachel? Has she said anything about what happened over the road? Not to my knowledge. Rosie Banks reports that she's been very quiet. Now, I've called this meeting to look once again at the continuing problem of the press and these ghoulish sightseers on the close. It's becoming a theme park over there. I reckon we should just blank them. Easier said than done. Well, perhaps you could convey that to your employee, Mr. Corkill. Oh, yeah. Getting a bit of a celebrity now, isn't he? Yeah. I could think of another word for him. That wretched dog of his may have got him into the newspapers, but what else has he said to the press? I trust him about as much as I trust those damn reporters out there. Hey, did you see me on the telly this morning? Oh, are you? Beverly Mac, News at 10, Brookside Close. <laughs> if we could stick to the agenda, please. But what is the agenda? I don't see what we can do. We'll just have to wait till they get off. This could go on for some time, Barry. I've seen it happen before. Oh, ah, uh, yeah, with your brother, the MP, when he got involved in all that scandal. Oh, that's right, yeah, I forgot about that thing. How long ago was it now? I don't think that is really relevant, Robin. Now, my proposal is that we form a subcommittee of the BRA to handle all cases of press intrusion on an ad hoc basis. Eh? This subcommittee, consisting of two people, plus myself, of course, could intervene and do what they can to solve matters and then report back to the regular residents' meetings. Well, I reckon we should tell the press any old rubbish and just get the money off them. We could start a fund for Mandy and the kids, couldn't we? It's a nice idea, Ron, but I think we should do our best to avoid any contact at all. Even some innocent remark could have an adverse effect on poor Mrs. Jordash's plight. Now, could I have some nominations for my proposal, please? Some names for the subcommittee. Surely there must be someone who's prepared to spare the time. Can't people find it difficult to find the time? I'm afraid I couldn't spare the time. I, I'm sorry. Me neither. Ron? Oh, don't look at me being him up to me eyes with two shops. Sorry. Very well. In the circumstances, I'd be willing to perform the duties of sole subcommittee member. All those in favour? Oh, aye. Yeah. Right, if there's no other business. Patricia, I think Ron would prefer a chicken sandwich. Um, did Jean leave any chicken ones? We're vegetarian. Is that why you flooded the whole of your back garden with poultry? David, I would like a ruling on livestock in a residential area. Uh, Max, can't we talk about this somewhere else? Look, I've got to go. But Jean's sausage rolls. Yeah, sorry about that. I've got things to do. You know, I'll uh, see you, everybody. Have fun. ta -da. You haven't seen these poor animals stuck in these farms. All I did was rescue them and you're complaining. And what you're eating now is some poor pig kept in some horrible shed who was butchered to make that boiled ham. Is it really so bad? A few chickens in a garden? All I'm saying is I have two children playing next door to them. I don't want them exposed to all kinds of disease. And what's Josh? He's a baby. And all he's having are healthy eggs from healthy, happy chickens. Uh, what about you, Ron? I mean, you didn't want that cockerel. That, why let her have five more of the damn things? Ah, uh, yeah, but... So I take it you agree with me? Ron? Well, let's put it this way, Maxie. 
As far as I'm concerned, if Bev wants chickens in the back garden, then she's got every right to have them. Nice one, love. Oh, this is ridiculous. Look, I'm afraid I'm going to have to leave this to the two parties to sort out. This meeting is closed. But if you both don't mind my saying so, I feel your predicament pales into insignificance when compared with the situation facing poor Mrs. Jordash and Sinbad. Say good night. No more questions till tomorrow. Oh, not again. I'm sorry. But someone's not telling me the whole story. So until I get the truth, more questions. Good night. Life in the Close is a Channel 4 book that costs £14.99 from most bookshops. Set foot outside there without the muscle on you. Have you heard any more about the jaw dashes? Still helping police with the inquiries and setting the radio. God, that's over 24 hours they've been in that cop shop. Uh, you can skip the salad for me, love. I'm gonna do myself some butties. Uh, no, you don't. There's more ways to get protein than meat. Oh, come on, Bev, love. I can't eat rabbit food forever. Well, then, how'd you fancy egg and chips? Oh, now that does sound a bit better. <laughs> That's nuggets, that's ham pies, and that's fried ricers. You mean they actually laid eggs? Yep. Oh, Josh had Kentuckys for his breakfast this morning. He loved it. Gobbled it up, and you know he's been off his grub lately. Oh, and uh, I got this at the library this morning. Tell you how to make a chicken run. I can make them run. I'll stick my boots up the backside. Ron, I want to keep these and look after them properly. Even when it's being brought up at the Residents Association. So you're going to let Max Farnham tell you the best way to bring up your son, are you? Did get his knickers in a twist, didn't he? <laughs> Daft cat. So, are you going to let me have this run, then? Aye, all right, but I still think it's a bad idea. And I'm only doing it because I'm not having Maxi flame and fan and tell me what I can and what I can't do. No buses will be running in Martin's Well after 6 o'clock in the evening this week. The bus has been brought off... You all right, love? Have them. I've done some cheese butties. Do you want some? No, thanks. Hey, you've got to eat, you know. I don't feel like it. I just keep thinking about everything that's happened going off to Ireland and that. The radio says her mum and Beth are still in the police station. Do you think you should be listening to stuff like that? It'll only upset you. 
I just want to know what's going on, that's all. Well, do you want to talk about it? What happened next door? It does help, you know. I'm all right, thanks. Oh, hello. Hi, Trish. You're Alpha with it? If you mean my father, no. Do you know where he is? Well, I mean, if he's not at home, he's probably out delivering for the florists. What do you want? I want to know why he smeared me to the papers. What? He's jealous of me having my picture in the papers, so he smeared me, hasn't he? Making me look like rubbish. Hmm. It does say that the bones your dog found were only old animal bones? Yeah, well, maybe they were. There's no need to go bringing up my past, is it, eh? I know it was him that told the papers I was an housebreaker. I don't see Dad doing that. I mean, he held a meeting last night where we decided not to talk to the press. Is this man bothering you? All right, boss. He says my father's libelled him in the papers. He stitched me. Look, he's told the papers I'm an housebreaker, all because he doesn't like cracker. But nobody likes cracker, do they? Yeah, well, there's no need to spread it all over the papers, is there? Hey, I could get damages for this. Uh, if you'll excuse me, I was getting ready to go out. But you are a housebreaker, soft lad. Ex-housebreaker, if you don't mind. You say you killed your father. But what about this other body? The one that was buried in Trevor's name? How did you manage to convince your mother that the body of a total stranger was her husband? Well, it was easy. Was it now? So how did you manage it? Well, Mum was really disturbed at the time. She was very unhappy. Because Dad had gone missing and she didn't know what had happened to him, so it was easy to convince her that those bits and pieces belonged to the tramp belonged to Dad. You mean your mother couldn't identify your father's own possessions? <laughs> it's a bit hard to believe, isn't it? She was really upset. She hardly even looked at them. Why don't you believe me? Because all of you are trying to cover up for each other. <laughs> Come on, Beth. Tell me, isn't it a fact that you and your mother were in on this together? You killed your father and you buried him outside. Then when the police found this other body, you got your heads together and you decided to identify him as Trevor Jordash. No. I did it on my own, Mum. had nothing to do with it. No. You did it together. That's the truth, isn't it? Some of these places. Yeah, it's lovely. Oh, you're going to love it here, aren't you, Alice? <laughs> you're going to be Josh's little mate on here every day, aren't you? Don't worry, Pat. Oh, Josh will keep an eye out for her. Would you like to go through, Miss McLaughlin? Yeah, sure. See you in a bit. Yeah. Look, Alice, eh? Look. We're busy for most time, aren't we, Max? Ah, uh, it's just a spin-off of this Jordash business. Most of them are reporters. All oh, right, all stuff on the faces on expenses, eh? Nice one. You gonna give me a hand? Well, that depends, doesn't it? On what? On whether you go out with me or not. <laughs> I don't think so. But why not? Wouldn't want your partner getting the wrong idea. It's got nothing to do with him. How about tomorrow night? Nice try, but no thanks. Oh, come on, one night, what I'm gonna do? No, no. Now, let me get on with my work, or I'll report you to Max. Barry, um, I think I'll carry on with this lot at home. Well, why is that? Well, it's quieter there. Um, it's less distracting. Yeah, all right, though. Right. See ya. Hey, um... Before you ask again, the answer's no. You deliberately identified someone else's loved one as your own husband so you could escape detection for killing Trevor Jordash. Don't you think that's the worst part about all this? I hated doing that, but I had to. I killed Trevor, but I didn't want to get caught. I didn't want to have to leave the girls. You make it sound like I enjoyed it. It wasn't like that. I see. Are you married? What? Are you? <sighs> yes, actually. Married with two daughters. And do you hit your wife? Do you beat her till she's black and blue? No. No. So you'll never begin to understand, will you? 
what it was like for me and the girls, fearing every day, frightened of being beaten, frightened of what he'd do to my daughters. I do understand. I've seen this before many times. You can't stop it, can you? It still goes on. It's all just the stupid woman's fault for taking him back in. I don't think that. He beat me once, badly, because I got the wrong bacon. Didn't like smoked bacon. But I took the beatings, nothing else to do. But when he did that to Rachel, I had to kill him. I just found the knife in my hand without thinking. It was the only way. What happened to the knife? Uh, I threw it away. Where? I put it in a bin bag and left it out for the bin men. If we find that knife, whose fingerprints will be on it? Yours or Beth's? <sighs> I've told you and told you. It was me, not Beth. Starts on Monday. That's soon. Oh, you want to see it? It's lovely. The staff are dead nice. He's gonna love it, aren't you? Eh? Oh, I'm gonna say, take Josh. Could have a word with Pat. We got off before she'd finished. Hey, Hiya, Pat. How did it go? Did she starts on Monday like our Josh. Um, hey, yeah. No, they don't want Alice. I'm afraid. You yeah, what? Why not? Well, they um, they haven't got the staff or facilities to cope with babies like her, so they say. Oh, hey. I'm sorry. No, no, it's all right. I'm sure I'll find somewhere eventually anyway. Um, I'll see you, yeah? See ya. Hiya. Hi, Beth. Now, I can't stand it at the restaurant any longer. It's Barry and that Emma girl making eyes at each other. Mommy, can I go out and play, please? Yeah, of course. Don't get dirty. Come on. Come on, boy. How did you get on at the nursery? <laughs> Danny? They won't take her. They say they haven't got the staff or the facilities to deal with a baby with Dan's. No. <laughs> Don't want her. So angry, Max. You know the way they portray that place? It's, it's so liberal and, and right on. No discrimination on the grounds of colour or creed and no, no, no problem with a one-parent family and yet, you know, they, they discriminate against a little girl like Alice. They say, um, say it might cause problems with the other children. Come on, let's go down there now and speak to them. It's out-and-out -out discrimination. No, no, it wouldn't do any good. They've made up their minds. I suspect they think having a little Downs baby like Alice would be bad for their trendy image, eh? No, no, I'm not having it. Come on, let's take Alice down there and tell them exactly what we both think. Right, cos I, I can't have you using Alice like some sort of weapon, you know? No, I'll, sorry, I'll just keep looking until I find somewhere that's willing to accept her. Look, Mom! <laughs> oh, Thomas, get away! Thomas, get away from it! Max, get it out! Get it, get Come it out! On, shoot! Thomas, did you touch it? <laughs> Did you touch it? No. Go Good boy. Max, for God's sake, get rid of it. Come on. Hey, what are you playing at? I've just had to get that bloody thing out of my house. Oh, sorry. Sorry? Sorry isn't good enough. Look, I've got children and I don't want filthy chickens running in and out of my house at will. I'm going to the council about this. It's not right. They stood on, Max. They're quite clean, actually. No, I'm sorry. Look, it's just not on, Ron. Now, get rid of them. Max, just leave it. Either you get these chickens out of this neighbourhood or... I'll get shut of them myself. Oh, yeah. And what's that supposed to mean, like? Whatever you want it to mean. Oh, yeah. Ron, pack it in. He's threatening these chickens here. I'll have the RSPCA on you. RSPB, I think you mean. Don't get smart with me, mate. Max, please. Ron, just shut up and get inside. You're making a show of us. Come on, just forget about it. Just forget about it. Come on. And, hey, you can tell the council off me if you like, because they can't do anything. Quiet, will you? 
What's up with you? They're supposed to be your chickens, aren't they? I'm just protecting them for you. Just had some bad news, haven't they? They've been told their Alice can't go to the nursery because she's... because of what she is. Got enough on the plate without you arguing over the back fence. Oh, God. Yeah, and I just think I feel now that Josh has been accepted. I'm gonna have to catch these chickens. Where did you stab him? Oh, I've told her all this. Tell me again. Uh, yeah. Right here, through the middle of his chest. I want to get this right. In the middle of his chest. I've told you. This is the pathologist's report on Trevor Jordash. It says the knife entered his heart and lungs through his back. Oh, uh, well, that's right. I was mistaken there. Uh, yeah, I stabbed him in the back. God, I remember now. It must have been easy at the moment. Yeah. Uh, it's coming back to me, hang on. I, I, I pushed him down, and I pushed the knife between his shoulder blades. Crap, you know it. I did it. You're just trying to cover up for Mandy and Beth. They killed Trevor Jordash, didn't they? No, they didn't. Honest to God, I swear it. I killed him in the back with the knife. No, you didn't. You just want to take the blame to protect the people you're fond of. Isn't that it? Well... Mr. Sweeney has nodded his head. Interview suspended, 4.15 p.m. They're still open the police with their inquiries. It's just been on the telly news. Oh, God. I wonder how long it's going to go on. No, I don't know whether it's the right thing taking Rachel in. <laughs> what if it goes on for months? What if their mother goes to prison? I'm stuck with her. Do you think they did it? Oh, I don't know what to think. Rachel won't tell me anything. God, what a mess. <laughs> this house just isn't big enough. Do you reckon Sarah might be moving on soon? I don't know. She hasn't said. But I doubt she wants to go back to her mum and dad's. Well, she could get a flat near here. She's done it before. I mean, it is only temporary here, being here. Can't we just leave it, you know, until this business next door blows over? I don't think it will, Carl. I think we could have Rachel with us for months. We can't go on like this. I was just going to do back of some tea. Come on, love. Yeah. There you go. If Sarah, as um, Rachel said anything to you about what happened next door, I mean, uh, does she know if her mother was involved? All she's doing is messing on Lou's computer. You know, it could be months until all this is sorted out. Well, uh, if her mother goes to prison and all that. What is all this? It's... Well, um... I was just wondering if, um... Well, if you and Becca might be better off somewhere else. Well, somewhere with a bit more room for the both of you. Is this your idea? No, I haven't really talked about it to Carl. Well, you haven't said what you're going to do, have you? Where you're going to stay? I mean, it wouldn't be right away. You could have as long as you like to look around. And, well, it is overcrowded. And when Carl's dad gets back from this course, it'll be even worse. I mean, we won't be able to cope here with Rachel with us and you and Beck and everything. And, well, things haven't exactly been a bed of roses, have they, Sarah? Where am I going to go? Well, you're working again. You could start looking around for a place and we'll help. You make it sound easy. Look at last time. And, um, I don't mind keeping the little one here till you're settled in. And Carl would do his share of looking after her, wouldn't you? Yeah, of course I would. Oh, I bet you would. Before I knew it, you'd be trying to hang on to her. I wouldn't do that, you know, I wouldn't. But we agreed we're not going to fight over Becca. I wouldn't take her away from you, not ever. You wouldn't. But she might. <laughs> Did you, uh, get me notes? What note was that? Hey, come on, I'm not soft. The answer's still no. Now, do you mind? I'm trying to work. And my boss is a real knock if he catches me fraternising. Well, I'll go on. Thanks. 
It's uh, new, this place, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, have you been here since the start? Almost, yeah. Oh, I suppose you'll know Beth Jordash, then. A bit. Why do you ask? Oh, I just wonder what she was like, you know, what sort of person. Are you a friend of hers or something? In a way, yes, yeah. Freelance journalist, human interest stuff, that's my line. Um, I believe she used to work here to pay her way through college. Is that right? I'm not talking to you or anyone else about Beth. Ah, oh, don't tell me. You're like everybody else. You want money before you even chat. I'd prefer it if you'd leave. Oh, look, I just want to chat about Beth, what she like, who are her friends, that sort of stuff. It's all very innocent. I want you to go. What's all this about? He's some kind of reporter. He's asking me about Beth, offering me money. Right, I think you'd better leave now, mate. Look, I've booked this table, and I've not even had my main course yet. Yeah, well, you start us on the outside, right, so if you wouldn't mind leaving. I'm sorry, but look, will you come now? Look, if you want to talk to me in your own time, I don't think she'll be needing that, OK? deserve to know. I'm only doing my job. Well, you're not doing it here, all right? I could have you for assault, you know. Oh, yeah. You could always give it a try. I wouldn't recommend it, though. I never bother with the courts when I'm getting my own back, all right? Now, I don't want to see you round here again or at the clubs. All right, ta -ra. Ah, good evening. Good evening. Welcome to Grant's. Sorry to keep you, Mandy. Right. The yeah, Cobra has entered the room. Interview recommences at 7.33 p.m. I've now got the complete pathologist report on your husband, Trevor. How did you kill him, Mandy? I stabbed him. What, because the poison didn't work? <laughs> There's nothing we don't know. Let me put it another way. Was the stabbing a backup measure after the poisoning failed? All these hours in here together, we seem to have overlooked this little detail, don't we? I don't think he'd have drunk this stuff for the good of his health. According to the experts, Mr. Jordash's liver and kidneys contained a large amount of a substance usually found in weed killer. It had enough to have killed him in agony within days. Are you going to tell me he drank this of his own volition? I don't know. You say you killed your husband in self-defence. To save your life and your daughter's lives. I did. But this puts a slightly different complexion on it, doesn't it? Administering poison. A slow, premeditated killing planned in cold blood. In other words, murder. So where does your Beth fit into all this? It's got nothing to do with her. Yes, it was planned, and I planned it because I hated him. You know what he did to my daughters. I mean, how would you feel if a monster like that got into bed and raped one of your girls, eh? How would you feel? I poisoned him, and then I stabbed him because I hated him and everything about him. For God's sake, he deserved it. He deserved to die. It's got nothing to do with Beth. Right, uh, I'm off to the club. I'll see you in the morning. That's unless you fancy a free champagne supper after you've knocked off. Sorry, I'm washing my hair. All right, it's your loss. Barry, thanks for getting rid of that reporter. I hate those leeches. That's no problem. And um, all done without resorting to violence as well, nice one. Oh, I see. You like the uh, non-aggressive approach, then, eh? You did fine, thanks. So does that mean we're all right for Friday, then? No, it doesn't. Anyway, won't they be going cold? Nice try, Mr Grant, but no. You know, I, I don't think it's such a good idea you flirting with the staff, not when we've got customers in. What are you talking about? I'm not. Well, perhaps flirting's too strong a word. What I really mean is chatting so personally with the staff when they're working just looks unprofessional, that's all. You do things your way, I'll do them mine. I'm a partner here, remember? I had to tell an off of Mr Farnham, have you? Oh, what a shame. And all for nothing. I must be slipping, though. I almost felt sorry for you then. You're a medical student, aren't you, Beth? You know that. So you know about toxicology? The effect of poisonous substances on the human body. Well? Well, I bet, yeah, not much. I think you know how dangerous weed killers can be. I'm not sure. 
don't treat me like an idiot. I know you know how dangerous poisoning weed killer can be. Because you and your mother poisoned your father with the stuff. And when he didn't die fast enough, one of you stabbed him. No. Who held the knife, Beth? Who stabbed him, you or your mother? I did. I want the truth, Beth. Look. You've got your whole life ahead of you. A career in medicine. Are you going to go to prison for life to protect your mother by lying to me and the courts? Who held the knife, Beth? Who? It was your mother, wasn't it? No, it was me. Who gave him the weed killer? I did. Are you sure? It was me, OK? Me! Why wouldn't you listen? Sunshine, time to go home. You what? I need you to sign some police bail forms, then you can go. I can't go. I did it, I killed him. No, you didn't. You're wrong, you should be letting Mandy and Beth go free. On your bike, Mr. Sweeney, please. You didn't kill Trevor Jordash. And stay away from your house, it's still sealed off. You can go back there when we say so, do you hear? Look, just let me see them, just for a few minutes, please. Go home. Are you going to feed that dog of yours? He's driving me crackers. <laughs> hey, did you get it? Crackers. What are you doing with that, Lou? Um, oh, Billy wants me to send them to him. You know, that fireplace he built. Why does he want a photo of a fireplace? Well, he's got a mate who's building one. He wants to see what it looks like, you know. Oh. Right. I'm off to work. Have you heard anything about Sinbad? No. He's such a gentle bloke, <coughs> isn't he? I can't believe he'd have anything to do with me, is it? I'm not so sure about that. Eh? Hey? I only remembered it last night. What? I was well bladdered at the time, but. I don't know how to say this. Well, just say it. Oh. One summer's night, I was round the back of the Jordash's place and I saw him. Digging. Sinbad. Go away. What were you doing there? Tony can't remember. I was bladdered, wasn't I? I don't know, maybe I was going to rob someone's house. But I didn't, honest. What was he doing? Did he see you? Oh, yeah, he saw me, all right. Well? Well, I can't remember exactly. You can't remember? God almighty, Jimmy! Look, I've thought and I've thought, but it's all gone. All I know is... he was digging in the middle of the flaming night. And I keep thinking... I wonder if he did have something to do with knocking off that Jordish fella. Do you reckon? Oh, 
Rachel, love, what's wrong? I just looked out the bedroom window and they all started looking at me and taking pictures. It's horrible. Can't I go to school? Should I go and have a word with them? You're wasting your time. Well, we've tried it. They won't go. Oh, I'm fed up of being stuck inside. Look, I'd be much better in school. I'm sorry, love, but you know your teacher says you're better if you stay off till things cool down a bit. If you go to school, only follow you. You won't get a minute's peace. It's oh, not fair. Oh, no, love. I'll make a move then, Rose. Sure it's still all right if me and Kev come for tea? Yeah, I'd better get a wash. I'll see you out, Mum. Hey, try not to get upset, love, eh? I just... I don't want to go in a home. Hey, no one's going to put you in a home. That's why you're here with us. I won't let them put you in a home. I can't live here forever, though, can I? No, but, well, until everything dies down a bit, you're always welcome here. You know that. But what if they don't ever let Mum and our Beth go? Hey, now there's no need to worry about that. Look, I know they've been in the police station a long time, but they'll be out soon. No, they won't. You don't know that, love. They'll never let them go for what they did. It was murder. Hey, now, don't be talking like that. It's true. Mum and I, Beth, killed my dad. I know it's true because they told me. <laughs> All right, so let's have a look. Uh, One fifty, please, love. Anything happening on the close today, love? I haven't seen anything. All them reporters are still hanging round. Has, um, has that young girl who's staying with you said anything to your mum-in-law at all you know about the murder? No, not that I know of. Anyway, I'll be glad to get out of there. I'm moving out soon. Somewhere where there aren't reporters hanging all over the doorstep. Ta-ra. ta, -ra. ta -ra. She's full of info, isn't she? Yeah. I'm just wondering where she's getting off to and who with. Eh? Hey? Got to close into our Michael, that one. I don't know, Jack, he's got a degree, he's got a new job. What's he doing with a married woman and a kid? Well, she must like him. How do you mean? He's just bought a Valentine card. But it's not for their husband of his. Oh, not more questions. Not today. Thought I'd take you and Beth for a little ride. Bit of fresh air. See you later. Opportunities until he's had time to relax from his ordeal. No, he's asked me to tell you to leave him in peace until he's over his experiences. Then he'll be making official statements to selected media outlets. Thank you. Could you tell us? I just wanted to get back in my flat. Them reporters are crawling all over the place, kid. You're a celebrity. I don't know what to do. I'll just leave it to me. What do you mean? Do you want a drink? Champagne. What do I want to drink champagne for? <sighs> what are you like? It's a celebration. Then it's all down to a bit of careful planning. What have I got to celebrate? You're out. You're out of the frame, aren't you? You're a free man. You've got the world's press begging for your life story out there. Listen, if I can't get some big shot PR, man, I'll have to do it myself, won't I? Now, OK, I know you're feeling a bit rough. I know what it's like, mate, being grilled for hours on end, but I'll take the weight off you completely. Just leave the business side to me. I'm lost, Jimmy. I'll be your agent. We'll split the money. Listen, I was thinking, 250 for each photo and 500 smackers for an interview. Oh, no. No way. I'm not talking to them. Sin, they've got money to burn them, I'm telling you. Jimmy. Mandy and Beth are being interviewed in a police station about a murder. I can't do that. Yeah, but, you know, I thought, like, it's our big chance, isn't it? Jimmy, she's all I've ever wanted. And all I want is her and Beth back home. Yeah, and, uh... Sorry, mate. Didn't she give you any details, like, how they killed him or anything? Oh, I don't want to know, thanks. All I know is I'm stuck with her. 
could be months before we know what's happening. It's just been on the radio. They've let that window cleaner bloke go. Oh, my God. Looks like what Rachel said was true. What's this? Rachel told me Mum, Mandy and Beth killed her dad. You're joking. I hope to God Sinbad doesn't come round here looking for her. Maybe you could look after Rachel. Hey, don't be daft, Mandy asked me. The police set it all up. So, how long will she have to stay? Well, the uh, way things are going, a couple of months. You know, um, what I was saying yesterday? I thought perhaps you could start looking for a place a bit sooner. I'm sorry, but... I see. Um, I've marked a few in here. They're quite reasonable. That was quick. The sun not that far away. Make it easier for me to see Becca. Yeah, well, I don't want to be cut off from her like I was before Christmas. Hang on. Have you seen the addresses on these? What's wrong? Well, last time I was looking for a place, everyone was saying you can't live in a dump like that. Well, now you're pushing me into looking for dumps. Well, we're just thinking about the cost, that's all. Oh, know what you're thinking. You want me out, no matter what it takes. You don't give a toss where I am as long as I'm gone, right? God, what are you like? You put some daughter of a murderer before your own family? Acres of it. Do you know what it is? It's all rubbish. Rubbish from houses, schools, restaurants, everywhere. Amazing, eh? All those bin bags end up here. Imagine if you'd lost something in that lot and you wanted to find it. Something small, like a vegetable nicely. What's the expression? A needle in a haystack. You'd think you'd never find it here, wouldn't you? Do you know what this is? I'll tell you, it's a record of every lorry load of rubbish that's ever been dumped in. The date, the tonnage, which streets it came from, and where exactly it was dumped and buried. Now do you know why I brought you it? We'll find that knife, and we'll get the fingerprints off it. And then we'll know which one of you is telling the truth, won't we? Might take weeks to find. Months even. But believe me, if it's here, we'll find it. It'll cost money and it'll cost man hours. But we'll do it because we have to. Why not do the taxpayers a favour, eh? Tell me the truth. Well? All right, sin. I heard they better get out. All right, boys. Yeah, Jimmy got me past the reporters. The busies won't let me go back to the house. What's happening with Mandy Jordash and her daughter? I don't know. They won't let me see them. Have they been charged with anything? I don't know anything. Do you want more coffee? No, no, no. Did you have anything to do with all of this? Barry, I haven't told anyone this. But I know I can trust you, can't I? I knew they'd done it, but I didn't kill him. I didn't have anything to do with that. He was like, he was evil. He was beating the living daylights out of Mandy, and he, you know, he was messing around with the kids, and uh, they, they had to get rid of him. I just wanted to help, but now I can't. I don't know what to do. It's all right, Sin. Forget I said all that. I shouldn't have said a word. I should have just kept my gob shut. 
Just keep yourself together, eh? I wouldn't say anything. I wouldn't do that. Look, this might be murder, you know. It might be trying to pin it on Mandy. But it doesn't always stick. Believe me, Sin. It might be self-defence or something. Don't tell Jimmy, will you? I've forgotten what you said already. All right, boss. Just been trying to find somewhere for this fella to Josh, but he'll be staying at mine. Straight up? Are you sure, boss? Well, don't be looking at me like I'm soft. I know what it's like to be handed by the busies, you know. And what about all the reporters on the close? Look, I don't care how you do it, but make sure they don't find out he's in my house or you're in double deep. The last thing I want is that vermin sleeping over me lawn. All right? All right, all right. By the way, did you tell some reporter to come round to the restaurant asking questions about Beth Jordash? No, 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 I didn't. See, one word to any reporter and you'll be looking for a new job, all right? Yeah, OK, OK. Right, Sine, uh, you can move in any time you like. Tapas, I really appreciate this. Got any ideas about us getting into yours without them reporters clocking us? Use that. That's what I pay you for, isn't it? So, have you decided yet or what? True. Let me do it. Mum, no! OK, the truth. I did it. Beth was there. We tried to poison him, but it didn't work. He was beating Beth, so I killed him. I put the knife in his back. I suppose that's for me. Do you mind not sneaking up on me like that? Who could it be for? Oh, I know. Uncle Mike. If I'm moving out, I don't suppose it matters who it's for, does it? True. You're acting like Mr Cool, but you're jealous, aren't you? No. Not of Uncle Mike, anyway. Do you have to call him that? There's no back of calling that yet. That's pathetic. No, Sarah, that's you. You're making a fool of yourself knocking about with him. Do you think a college graduate with a good job's gonna get himself saddled with another fella's wife and kid? It's not like that. Anyway, I'm moving out. It's none of your business. What happens to my kid is... Hey, okay, Kev, come in. Oh, take no notice of that loss. You'd think the papers had nothing better to write about. Couldn't be dealing with this. Those tow rags camping out on my front. Oh, live here and you get used to it. Here, sit down. Mo's expecting you. Got the day off then, Kev. You're in the pub business, Mo said. Yeah. Look at them. Bloody scum. Are you all right? Just like them. Poor sods must be freezing out there. If they knew what we were having, if they'd see, they'd be kicking the door down. <laughs> all right, lads. Get head down and get in quick. And listen, don't answer the phone or the door to anyone. Have you got it? Go. Mo, what are you doing in there? Making your will? Your Kev's sitting here waiting for you. I will be a minute. It's all right with me, aren't you, Kev? Yeah. Uh, you used to manage the Ocean Star, didn't you? I used to go in there with the lads from the footy team when I was underage. How do you hear them? What right do they think they've got? I'd say no noses, Kev. Look at them. Carrying on like they own the bloody street. Clear off, go on, sod off out of it. Get lost, you flock of bloody vultures. Kev! Sorry, but it's that lot. They do me head in. 
Well, I know, but... They hound you, they write all sorts of lies, they ruin people's lives. As long as they get wound up. Look, if you really want them sorted, I'll go out there and have a word with them. Yeah, it's all right. Just brings back bad memories, that's all. Have you had problems with them before, Kev? <sighs> they nearly ruined me life once. After the car accident, when my wife died. <sighs> she loved a party, but she couldn't take a drink. She wasn't like they said. It was all lies. Is that why you don't drink? Not these days. Do you want to tell us about it? I mean, you have got yourself a bit steamed up there, haven't you? You know what, we'll be down in a minute. I'd sooner not, thanks, Rose. Look, I'd best get off. Hey. Mo's only in the bog. Look, tell her I'm sorry, but I'd feel better if I went. I'll give her a ring. OK, if you want, but are you sure? She'll only be a sack. Look, Mo! Kev's got to go. Hurry up. Coming down now. Yeah, she's coming now. Tell her good night for me. I've got to go. What do you reckon's up with it? No idea. I was going to think it's here. Looks like he's got a real downer on this press lot. Give him a couple of drinks and put him in the spare room. I'll look in on him when I get home. Right, cheers, Jimmy. How is he? He's just needing a good kip, that's all. Jimmy's made up with himself getting him past the press. Secret agent stuff, eh? Well, he's not as soft as he looks sometimes. I think it's really nice of you having that fella staying at yours like that. Yeah, well, I reckon he's innocent. He just got dragged into everything, didn't he? It seems funny thinking Beth killed her dad. Well, he'd already been banged up, hadn't he, for knocking the mother about. He deserved everything he got. Another dose of jail, maybe, not being murdered. Well, can't we talk about something else? No, I'm interested. You think you know someone like Beth and then you hear they've been involved in a murder? To think I was working as close as I am to you with a murderer. Yeah, well, no one's found her guilty yet, have they? Yeah, but she must have been involved somehow. Yeah, well, we'll just have to wait and see, won't we? So, how about this do at the weekend, then? God, you just don't give up, do you? Well? You know your trouble. You just don't like anyone saying no. So was that a no, then? Right, well, that's it. I give up. Now, I might have said no, but who mentioned giving up altogether? So when do you think you'll be able to move out? God knows. It's money, isn't it? At least I'll be able to afford on my wages as a crummy bed sitting in a crap area. Yeah, but you must understand, you can't get straight off. You've got to save up, haven't you? <sighs> Rosie wants me out. Full stop. Yeah, but Eddie's back soon, isn't he? I mean, from what you told me, he wouldn't have kicked you out. I don't know. She'll probably work on him. She's done a good enough job with Carl. I don't believe this. She's locked me out. Right. Hang on, hang on a second, Ronnie. Just leave it, eh? Don't you think it'll cause more trouble? <sighs> Rosie's done this on purpose. Eh, uh, look. You can, uh, you can stay in the flat if you want. I'll just keep on the sofa. Well, what about the girls? Well, I'll explain it to them. They'll understand. You really don't mind? No problem. <sighs> the only thing is leaving our back area. Mind you, I suppose if I got up with you today early in the morning, I could be back before the new air can come home. Well, that's up to you. All right, then. I will. Thanks, Mike. Amanda Jane Jordash, you are charged with two offences. The first charge is that at Brookside Close, Manor Park, in the county of Merseyside, on or about the 7th of May 1993, you'd conspire to murder Trevor Jordash, contrary to common law. On the second offence, you are charged that at Brookside Close, Manor Park, in the county of Merseyside, on or about the 7th of May 1993, you'd murder Trevor Jordash, contrary to common law. If you wish to say anything, I must warn you that what you do say may be written down and used as evidence. Do you have anything to say in relation to the first charge? Do you have anything to say in relation to the second charge? I killed him because he threatened to kill me and my daughters. Elizabeth Jordash, you were charged that at Brookside Close Manor Park in the county of Merseyside, on or about the 7th of May 1993, you'd conspire to murder Trevor Jordash, contrary to common law. If you wish to say anything, I must warn you that what you do say may be written down and used as evidence. Do you have anything to say in relation to the charge?
she locked you out? She's just being funny, like. Right? I'm gonna have to get out of that place. It's doing me, Eddie. So where are you gonna go? Don't know. I suppose I'll have to start looking for a flat or something. It's a bit of a pain, that, though, isn't it? Do you work and just round the corner? Yeah, well, it means getting away from that cow, Rosie. It'll be well worth it. Anyway, I've got to get back. This should be up by now, and I want to see Becca. OK, I'll see you later. Take it easy. I will. Oh, Mike. Thanks for the valley. It was lovely. Yeah, yeah, no sweat. See ya. I'll see you later. See you later, Jackie. Yeah, that's right. Ta-da. Oh, yeah. I've got the photos. Everything. Exclusive, boys. Well, I'm not going to show them to you here in broad daylight, am I? Meet me down the alehouse. Bloody traitor. <laughs> oh, Eddie. <laughs> no need to ask where you've been. He's back all around. Oh, I'm sorry you've missed her. Our oh, car's taking to the park. Well, if you'd managed to get home last night. Yeah, well, I would have if someone hadn't locked the door. <laughs> if you think I'm leaving that door unlocked with all that shower from the papers hanging around outside. <sighs> Listen, save it, Rosie. I've got the message. I'm going to start looking for somewhere else. Me and Becca will be out of here and out of your life as soon as we can. And what are you doing talking to them scumbags outside? You are? Don't come the innocent with me, Jimmy. I saw you. All right, take it easy, will you? Take it easy? After all the crap they've printed. OK, OK. So what have you got me down as, eh? I know you, Jimmy. Anything for a few quid. Oh, oh well, thanks very much, mate. Here's me looking out for you, and you accuse me of all sorts. You what? Me and Cracker here, we've just warned them off, haven't we? Yeah? Yeah. I've told them any more porkies, any more crap, and they'll have Jaws here to answer to. You did that for me? Yeah, well, mates, aren't we? Yeah. Some lamb. Cheers. Nice one, sir. Yeah, yeah. No sweat, mate. Who's that? Wait a minute. Oh, hiya. Oh, Rosie, you nearly gave me a heart attack there, love. What are you doing sneaking round the back like that, eh? Well, I didn't want them journalists seeing me, did it's I? It's supposed to be a safe house, this, isn't it? No one's supposed to know he's here in hiding, like. Oh, right. It, the thing is, I think all the neighbours know. You what? Hey, don't worry. No one's going to tell that lot out there. Oh, it's a good job. Last thing I need is them scumbags on me case. Oh, yeah, of course. It, so, any news on Mandy and Beth? Well, they're up in court today to see if they can get bail. Oh, right. Surely they're not going to keep them banged up on remand, are they? Hey, Mandy and little Beth, those two, they wouldn't harm a fly, would they? Mm. Well, you know what I mean, like. Yeah, well, the busies have got them down as murderers. I don't think they're going to be too keen on having them walk the streets. So you really think they're going to try and keep them inside? I don't know, Rose. I've asked the solicitor to put me house up for bail if I have to. I just hope to God it's going to be enough. Hey, don't be worrying about that. Listen, you could stand bail for the great train robbers, you. <sighs> Posh gaff, you've got over there. Anyway, listen, yours truly, bit of business to attend, so we'll catch you later, all right? All right, Thanks, see you. Yeah, ta-da, see you. See you later. Rosie Banks is making her life a misery. I mean, locking her out like that. Yeah, well, people don't like being taken for granted, Mike. You what? Well... It might have been an idea if she told Rosie she was going to be staying out that late. And it might have been an idea if you'd asked if Sarah could doss here. Hang on a minute. I live here. I can have you all once. Oh, really? Yeah. But it's me and Casey who pay the rent. Yeah, but I'm going to be paying my way soon. I'm working, aren't I? Oh, all right. But it's only a two-bedroom flat, remember? And there just isn't, isn't enough room to be having all sorts staying over. Sarah is in all sorts. She's my girlfriend. Mm. And I'm not seeing her homeless. Hey, man, on a minute. What are you talking about? Well, what I'm saying is, she's got nowhere to go when she leaves the banks, then, you know. Er, uh, no way. Just till she gets sorted, Jackie. No, not a chance. But she's going to be homeless with a kid. Yeah, a four-year-old kid in a place this size with four other people. No way. It'll cramp all style. Oh, they're not going to be any trouble. I know they're not going to be any trouble, cos they're not moving in. I mean, you moving in on invitors was quite enough. No way, no. Oh, you can just forget about it. So how's Rachel then? Oh, well, you know, bearing up. Although, it doesn't help having half a Fleet Street outside the front door. Yeah, poor little thing. I was hoping to get to see her for a few minutes, you know, just oh, to talk I'm to sorry, Simbad. Don't think that's a good idea. What do you mean? 
Well, you know, she's upset and she's very confused. And to be honest, I don't think she'd want to see her. Not after everything that's happened. Yeah, but I'm I sorry, wants... but best not upset her. I couldn't have to leave it at that. Yeah. All right. Okay. See ya. Thanks, Rose. We'll see ya. God, Mandy Jordash, a murderer. Oh, no. It's hard to believe, isn't it? Uh, she's only been charged, you know, innocent till proved guilty and all that. Yeah, and no smoke without fire and all that. I mean, who's a thought? Mm. Hi, Max. Hello. Hello. All right, Maxie. Hey, have you heard the latest? I'm sorry. About Mandy Jordash. Oh, I'm not interested in idle gossip. Only been charged with murder, that's all. Really? That's extraordinary. When did this happen? Oh, I see. Not interested in idle gossip, eh? So what can I get you? Well, how about a packet of earplugs for starters? Oh, sorry, mate, no can do. Fresh out of earplugs. Oh, right. Well, well, I'll settle for a packet of Paxo, then. Mmm, sage and onion, my favourite. How could you? Oh, it's simple. You just fry up some sausage meat and slip on the old marigolds. Yeah, all right, Maxie, all right. Those chickens are practically family, you know. You made your point. Well, obviously, I haven't, because Rooster Coburn and his posse woke us up again this morning at dawn, and it's not going to happen again. Oh, yeah? Yes. Either you get rid of those horrible little hens, or I will. Get stuff, Maxie. That's just what I expected from you, Dixon. I haven't heard the last of this. Hiya, Meg. All right, Rosie. Hey, listen, uh, any idea where Simba is? I'm going to be knocking on his flat, but he's not there. Yeah, well, he wouldn't be. He's in hiding. You what? From all them journalists who've been hanging around the place. Oh, right. I, I don't blame him. So, um, so where is he, then? Well, I um, shouldn't really say. I've already had my wrist slapped once today. Oh, come on, Rosie. I mean, me and Simba, I mean, we're like that. Well, I've got to see him. See if there's anything I can do to help. Yeah, all right. He's in Barry Grant's place, but not a word to anyone else. It's supposed to be some big secret. Oh, no, of course. Hey, cheers, Rosie. I'll sleep well later. See how it's getting on. All right. See ya. See ya. Hey, Kevin. What are you doing around here? Picking these up. Oh, that's lovely. Yeah, well, it's a special day, isn't it? Listen, I'm in a bit of a hurry. I'll see you later at the Darty. Oh, well, I don't know if I'll be able to make it, but I'm sure I'll Mo will be there. Right. Anyway. Yeah, see ya. I'll tell Mo you were asking after her. Who's that? Oh, Mo's fella. Did you see that bunch of flowers he had with him? Yeah? Oh, Mo's gonna be made up. Be the best Valentine she's ever had. Oh. You should have seen them, Mel. Massive bouquet. Must have set him back a good few, Bob. And there was me slagging him off because he didn't send me a card. Mm. He must just want to surprise me at the darts tonight. I can't wait. Oh, it's great, eh? Oh, I just wish I was going to be there seeing your face when he gives you them. You're not going to be at the darts? No. Well, how can I with Rachel here? Eh? Hey, she's a big girl. She'll be all right. And anyway, your Carl will be in, won't he? Yeah, but I'm supposed to be looking after her. I mean, I'm responsible for her. Hey, don't be daft, sis. She can't be here 24 hours a day. Get out tonight. Enjoy yourself. Oh. I don't know if I'm in the mood for going out. You know, with all this business with Sarah and that. All the more reason to get out, isn't it? You need a break from all the grief. Yeah, well, me and me organising a team and all that. Oh, and we're a couple of players short, sure, so. You leave that to me, I'll sort a team out. You just make sure you're there tonight. I want you to be there when Kevin gives me those flowers. Yeah, all right. If Rachel doesn't mind. Nice one, sis. Uh, is it okay if I make a cup of tea? Yeah. Help yourself. Just go and square things with Rachel. You all right, love? Feeling better. Listen, how about getting yourself out tonight? Cheering yourself up? The court has listened to the defence's application for the accused to be granted bail. It has also listened to the prosecution's case for opposing such an application. <coughs> the accused appeared before the court today charged with the offences of murder, 
and conspiracy to murder. These are of the utmost gravity. And given the nature and seriousness of the offences, the prosecution have argued that if the accused were to be granted bail, it would be unlikely that they would surrender to custody at a later date. <coughs> the prosecution have also argued that the nature of the offence committed has so outraged the local community that the accused should be remanded in custody for their own well-being. In reply, it has been put forward that the defendants were of previous good character. However, uh, this in itself is of insufficient reason for granting bail. The primary concern of the prosecution is that if bail were granted, the defendants would abscond. Is there anything to allay this fear? The court has heard that the defendants both have strong ties with the local community. Both have lived at a fixed address for a considerable time. And indeed, one is undertaking a course of study at the local university. It is the opinion of the court that the defendants would be most unlikely to jeopardize all this by failing to surrender to custody at the appropriate time. Accordingly, bail is granted under the conditions that the defendants shall surrender their passports. And suitable surety is forthcoming with bail to be fixed at the sum of £10,000 each. Cheers, matey. There you go. More pickies from inside the House of Horrors. <laughs> Here. Yeah, look at that. See that fireplace? Me and our Billy put that in nice, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. That's our Billy there. Yeah. Uh, KC boss. Some of the scams we got up to, you wouldn't believe me. Fresh greens, all my own handiwork. <laughs> Tar, it um, looks delicious. And for afters, I've done as an egg and dried fig bake. Oh, good. Sounds mouth watering. Hey, for my own free range eggs. Would be a sec. Hey, just think of the good it'll do you. <laughs> Stay here. Are you sure he doesn't mind? Yeah, well, we've no one else to go, have we? Till the police release the house. Not that we get any peace with all those reporters hanging round. Hang on. Not me cooking was that bad. Oops. You've got to try and eat, love. I can't. I just can't face it. My stomach is churning. I thought they were just going to lock us up in that place. Hey. It's all right. I love it. Like somebody says, we might be able to go home soon. Yeah, but for how long before they lock us up again? Hey, this isn't going to happen. No one's going to be locking either of you up. I'm going to get the best lawyer that money can buy. I'll sell the house if I have to. I don't want you selling the house, Simba. <laughs> Look, I'll do everything I can to keep you two out of prison. I'll sell everything I've got. And what about Rachel? Well, what about her? Well, if the worst has come to the worst, what then? No one's going to prison. Rachel will need somewhere to live, and so will you. We're all going to be all right together. And what if we aren't? Simon, I want you to promise me that if the worst does happen, you'll look after Rachel for us. Nothing's going to happen, all right? We've come this far together. We're going to see it through together. No one's going away. I won't let it happen. Simbad. 
Where have you been all day? Here and there, round and about, you know. Oh, yeah. And you've got nothing else to say to me? No, I don't think so. You don't even know what day it is, do you? I do. It's Tuesday, isn't it? Oh, very funny, Jimmy. I'll see you later. Hey, hang on, hang on. Hey, hey, hey. That for me, what? You what? You know, Valentine's and all that. Oh, so you've suddenly remembered? Oh, as if I'd forget. My sweet. Oh, Jimmy. What a lovely. Must have cost a fortune. They're dead. But how? Where'd you get the money? Off some stuck up journalist on the close. World exclusive love. Oh, Jimmy, you didn't. I did. 500 quid for my life story in the house of hell. Soft get, loved it. Oh, I don't be worrying, will you? I never mentioned no names, nothing like that. It's the easiest money I've ever made, that. You were talking to that lost. <sighs> If I didn't, some other scumbag would, wouldn't he? Eh? At least my stuff arms no one. So, do I get me valley now, what? Ah, oh, the poor kid, she must be exhausted. I'll leave this here for her. Here you go. Thanks. Hey, listen, about me getting upset before, you know. It doesn't matter. Yeah. It's a matter I really appreciate everything you've done for us. Trying to take the blame like that. Well, you know, I'd do anything for you and the girls. Yeah, I know. And thanks. But I think you've done more than enough already. Yeah, it's a bit like being under siege here at the moment, isn't it? With all these reporters around. I wonder when they're going to give it up. They're gone. What? Well, the journalists. The cars aren't there anymore. Oh, right. Probably crawl back to their gutters for the night. They'll be back tomorrow, no doubt. Right. Hang on, where are you going? I'm going to see Rachel. Well, hang on, mind. <sighs> Don't think she's going to want to see you. Hiya. 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 How are we getting on? Don't ask me. I've only just got here. Yeah! Oh, one down, five to go. Hard luck, Jack. Tough. Good lines. Who's up next? I am. Oh, cheers, love. Hello, Rosie. Didn't think darts was your thing. Uh, should we go to the bar, love? It isn't your mum invited me. She didn't say you'd be here. Yeah, obviously. I thought she was keen to get me here. I'm very considerate of her. Here, for the darts team. Oh, on the house. Thanks, Kev. I'm just going to get myself a drink, are you? Cheers, love. Hey, that's Mo's fella over there. She's done all right. She's not there, hasn't she? I thought she'd be here tonight, actually. I mean, what with them being surrounded with a bevy of beauties like this. <laughs> so, no more tonight? Oh, well, she said she'd be here. Wouldn't want to miss you. You know, you're all she's talked about. Kev this, Kev that. Glad to hear it. Actually, um, wouldn't mind a bit of a chat. I think she's a bit obsessed about the other night, you know, when you got off from ours so quick. Yeah. Sorry about that. It's just that press loss. I had some problems with them a few years back. They wrote some lies about me, made me life a misery. Oh, I'm sorry. Ah, I, I didn't want to pry. No, you're all right. I don't blame you. It must have looked a bit odd, me kicking off like that. Ah, oh, don't worry about it. It's just Mo. You know, she got obsessed. She thinks it's her. No, it's not her. Right, you've got a darts match to win. <laughs> I've got beer to sell. See you later. Yeah, see you after. Rachel, is that you? Mum! Oh, Rachel, love. What do you want? Well, I, I, I want to see you, of course. Oh, no! Rachel! Go away! Please. Rachel, I've opened the door. Nice. Hiya, Kev. Oh, all right, Mum. Late, aren't you? I couldn't get away from La Luce, but I'm here now, aren't I? Good. The girls will be pleased to see you. Well, I'm the star player, aren't I? I mean, how else could they avoid a Valentine's Day massacre? Better get in there, then. Yeah, better add. So, did you get many Valentines, then? Bet the post you suffered here, any eh? Nah, just the one. Wouldn't know that was off, would you? Do you like it? Yeah, it's great. Thanks. Right, then, uh, better get in. Leave you to it. 
See you later. Yeah. Okay, Mom. Where have you been? We're one man down here. Sorry, I'm late. Listen, I thought you said he had a big bunch of Valentine's flowers for me. He did, I saw them. Well, they weren't for me. In fact, I think I've blown it, Rose. He doesn't seem to want a nap. He just practically blanked me out there. Oh, get lost. It's just your imagination. Look, he's a bit shy, that's all. Do you want me to have a word with him? Would you? Tell me everything he says, eh? Leave it to me. Well, I don't know why I should be helping you after you telling Sarah to come here tonight. Oh, I just thought it might smooth things over between you. She's not a bad kid. She's got a cheek and you know her. So nice try, but no thanks. Nice. You go and score a few points for us. And I'll go and sort out your love life. Good luck. How's it going? Trusting your position? Hey, well, not yet, but the reinforcements arrived. Did you see Armo come through? Um, yeah, just now. Right, good. Look, Kev, um, I hope you don't mind me saying, but, um, well, it's Armo. She thinks there's something wrong. And what do you mean? Well, you know, between you and her, she was expecting a card or something, you know, for Valentine's. I'm sorry, but I can't. <laughs> Why? What's up? I was married on Valentine's Day, seven years ago. Oh, God. The flowers, they were for you. Yeah. It's our anniversary. I'm sorry. I never realised. You weren't to know. I took the flowers to her grave today. It all came back to me, Rosie. The night she died, and what all happened. I thought I was over it, but... Oh, hey, now. Come on, love. It's all right. I should have let her drive, Rosie. I should have stopped her. No, it wasn't your fault. It was an accident. It was my fault. Because I, I knew she'd been drinking. And I still let her drive. I should have stopped it. <laughs> Come on, love. Come on. <laughs> Rachel, please open the door. Look, I wouldn't do anything to hurt you. Please, love. Go away. Leave me alone. I can't. I've got to see you. No. Please, please. I hate you. Rachel. I hate you and I hate Beth. 